This presentation in financial markets and institutions is on central banking and the Federal Reserve System. I'm Pat Obi, Professor of Finance at Purdue University, Calumet. And what you see here is the is a picture of the beautiful building that is the headquarters of the Federal Reserve System in Washington, D.C. And then um, continuing what I what I've done here in this uh, descriptive presentation is to provide you with a little bit of the background of how we eventually came to have a central banking system in the United States and it began with uh, the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Prior to that time we had a pretty turbulent uh, financial economy in the United States and you can see here previous attempts to establish a central bank um, that became futile and the reason why there was strong resistance to it is because states were more concerned about their um, autonomies than of the wisdom of having um, a lender of last resort <laughs> namely a central bank and so with uh, bank panics that became commonplace um, eventually, in response, Congress passed the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 and as a way to appease those states that were particularly concerned about losing their autonomies, uh, the, the Congress was wise to uh, pass this act by establishing a Federal Reserve System rather than one central bank for the entire United States and I'm going to explain that a little bit better to you because what we have here is a system of central banks as opposed to one particular central bank. In any event we call it the Fed and as you see here the the traditional functions of a central bank are performed by the Fed and they include regulating commercial banks serving as the lender of last resort which is what we saw during the 2008 financial crisis uh, when all uh, hell um, uh, broke loose and then serving as the government's bank and in that regard um, it does um, help the US government to sell Treasury securities and import, most importantly developing and implementing monetary policy so now in this Federal Reserve System we actually have 12 central banks so the country is broken into 12 districts each district has a central bank and the central the Federal Reserve Banks um, are the ones identified in blue these are the uh, Federal Reserve Bank cities and uh, we also have uh, Federal Reserve uh, branch cities, uh, the ones uh, in black. Note in particular that Alaska and Hawaii that are not in the continental United States are part of the um, 12th district which is headquartered here in San Francisco. Now though the headquarters of course of the Federal Reserve System is Washington DC. New York though is a power broker in all of this because this is where about a quarter of um, all the assets are are held and so the so you're gonna see uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York has a permanent seat in the Board of Governors which is gonna be the top policy making body but here I summarize the general functions of the Fed the most important of which is this last one here monetary policy a policy that calls on the Fed to control the supply and cost of money as a way to promote a strong and healthy economy and in that regard we have four key goals of monetary policy the first three are the most important price stability which is inflation control really full employment and a stable economic growth now maintaining a stable balance of payments which is basically ensuring that the US dollar has a fair value in the international market is also a goal but a diminutive one nonetheless um, nevertheless um, so what you see here is the organization structure. At the top of which we have the Board of Governors this, uh, comprising seven members, all of whom are appointed by the President of the United States and confirmed by Congress. And then if um, right over here is uh, the Federal Open Market Committee, which is the key policy-making arm 
of the Fed, the most powerful body really. And these 12 members include all of these seven member board of, uh, members in the Board of Governors. And we also have the Federal Advisory Council, which simply offers uh, advice to the Fed. Now, we have the Federal Reserve uh, Banks, which I just showed you. There are 12 of them. And then all the nationally chartered bank, commercial banks in the United States are, uh, by law, members of the Federal Reserve System. There are also state chartered banks that choose to be members of the Federal Reserve. Now, what you see here is the structure of the Fed in addition to the policy tools summarized here on the bottom. So again, at the top, you'll see the Board of Governors consisting of seven members, all of whom are appointed by the President of the United States and confirmed by the Senate. And then we have the 12 Federal Reserve District Banks. Each bank has nine directors. Of these nine directors, three are appointed by the, bo by the Board of Governors and the remaining six are, um, are drawn from, are elected by the member banks of the, of, um, within the system, the commercial banks that are part of the Federal Reserve System. Now then, we have the Federal Open Market Committee, which as I told you is the most powerful policy making arm. It's, uh, there are, uh, it, it it comprises the seven members board of governors uh, in addition to the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and then four others uh, that are selected from the remaining um, Federal Reserve banks. So as you can see here um, there are 12 members here in the FOMC of which seven are members of board of governors. The uh, eighth one is the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and then the remaining four come from um, a rotation of the other Federal Reserve Banks. All right, I hope I said that correctly and I'm sure I did. And then we have the Federal Adv Advisory Councils. There are 12 members. These are generally bankers and members of other members of the community that um, provide advice on the on the local economy. So as you can see down here, the reserve requirements are um, under the um, um, the regulatory authority of the Board of Governors. So the set limits and the reserve requirements uh, um, is actually the proportion of bank deposits that must be held in reserve so as to ensure the safety and soundness of the banking system. And then the open market operations are directed by the FOMC. This is the most important function of, the, of uh, our monetary policy. Then the discount rate is pretty much established by the Federal Reserve um, in the, uh, of the Federal Reserve Banks, uh, by the Federal Reserve Banks in their various 12 districts. However, um, the Board of Governors um, has to approve whatever discount rate is set. The discount rate though in the United States is the interest rate that the Federal Reserve Bank in each district will charge a member bank, a commercial bank that wishes to come and borrow from the discount window from that Federal Reserve Bank. And so here, uh, much of what I've, I've said right now um, is summarized right here. and. Um, Continuing, the functions include set and reserve requirements, and then I, if you go down here, I summarize the responsibilities of the Board of Governors to include supervising the 12 Federal Reserve Banks, appointing the directors for each of the Federal Reserve District Banks. Remember that the remaining six are appointed by the, um, uh, by the banks, uh, by the member commercial banks in that district. They also do regulate bank holding companies, foreign banks uh, operating in the U.S. and U.S. banks operating um, overseas and stuff like that. Now, the Federal Open Market Committee, which you probably hear a lot more than any other arm of the Federal Reserve System, they do meet about eight times a year. Uh, that's approximately every six weeks. And there are 12 members consisting of all seven member Board of Governors, the Pe presidents of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, 
um, and then presidents of four other Federal Reserve banks. Now note that the chairman of the Board of Governors, which as of 2015 is uh, Dr. Janet Yellen, is also the chair of, of uh, FOMC. And um, before her, we had a Bern Dr. Bernanke, and before Dr. Bernanke, we had uh, Dr. Gr Alan Greenspan, and then before Greenspan, we have uh, Dr. Paul Volcker, and going back. Um, if you go to my website, padobi.com, you'll see a little bit of, uh, uh, of the history um, of the Federal Reserve Bank and the individuals I particularly admire that play a role in that system. So anyhow, as I note here, open market operations, which involves the purchase and sale of U.S. Treasury securities as a way to control money supply, is the most important policy tool that the Fed uses to control money supply. Now continuing, um, I note here that the FOMC is responsible for implementing monetary policy by its authority to set the reserve requirements on the deposits of all depository institutions, which as you know, I lined it up with the Board of Governors, but remember that the Board of Governors is also a part of the FOMC. And they also set target interest rates for the federal funds interest rates. The federal funds interest rate is the interest rate that banks pay one another when they borrow and lend amongst each other, amongst themselves. And then the discount rate, which is the interest rate that the Federal Reserve Bank charges banks that, that come to it to take out a loan. So be careful to distinguish between the federal funds interest rate, which is the interest rate that Bank A would charge Bank B when Bank B borrows money from Bank A from the discount rates, which is the interest rate that either Bank A or Bank B would pay if they borrow money from the Federal Reserve Bank in their district. Now, also, they engage in open market operations and, uh, and stuff. Now, open market operations is, is, is most important here which, as I mentioned earlier, involves the buying and selling of U.S. Treasury securities. And in this sense, the doing that helps to set the desired or target rates for the federal funds uh, interest rates. How does that happen? Well, um, when the Fed purchases Treasury securities, they increase money supply because when they buy Treasury bonds, they pay, they pay you money, and that money adds to the supply of money in circulation. And so, on the other hand, when they sell Treasury securities to the general public, they are getting money from you. In other words, they are retrenching, they are taking back some of the money in circulation, and as a result, decrease money supply. Why do they do this? Well, back over here, when they purchase Treasury securities from the public, which, as I noted, would increase money supply, it is a way of stimulating the economy. This is something the Fed would do if it feels that the economy is kind of sluggish and it wishes to, uh, you know, to push it a little, a little more to, you know, put some energy into the system. So when it does that, when it buys treasury securities by paying cash to the general public and as a result increase uh, money supply, that helps to keep interest rates low. And so that is an expansionary monetary policy. On the other hand, when they sell treasury securities to the public and as a result decrease money supply, it is a way of um, keeping inflation in check because by reducing money supply it does help to cool the economy and as a result make sure that inflation doesn't run away. So as you can see the sale of Treasury securities is a contractionary monetary policy 